we may we may pull a nugget or two out of this one. <laughs> I know for sure. So for sure, I was talking to this guy you might have heard of named Mike Sherrard about an hour ago. Uh huh. And I was and he was talking through. He's like, "Here's what I'm doing, and here's what I'm doing." So let me summarize this for you. And he's like, "Yes, exactly. That's what I'm talking about." So I said, "So here's here's really the process simplified." Yeah. Uh, what kind of what kind of ice cream do you like, Nate? What kind Nate? of ice cream do you like? Yeah, uh, vanilla. <laughs> What is with you Simple. vanilla people? <laughs> Mike Schwartz like vanilla. I'm like, who eats vanilla ice cream? It's like, it's like flavorless. It doesn't even have a flavor. It's like, all right, all right, we'll go eat, with uh, eat, eat so the next, like nothing. So the next go to would be um, uh, so going complex Ben and Jerry, the Netflix Ben and Jerry that has like peanut butter and fudge and like the pretzels in there. Like it's pretty good. Yeah, we'll go with that one. Uh, all right. <laughs> Do you see what I just did to you? Uh huh, dude. I just shamed you into changing your mind on what you love, right? And then what happens is you're like, I got well, I'll eat this Ben and Jerry's. I'm like, I really want vanilla. Uh -huh. so why are we telling people how to build their business our way and shaming them into doing it our way versus yeah. actually saying, What do you want? How do you want to get you want vanilla? Great, would you like a yeah. little bit of sprinkles with that? And they're like, You got what? So do you want to put a little chocolate sauce on that too? Maybe cherry? Do you want some whipped cream? There's a couple of other things to go with. But when somebody says, hey, man, I want vanilla ice cream. Don't shame them into changing their mind on something. I mean, don't get me wrong. Good yep. salesperson can shame you into doing anything. And that's uh -huh. why we have a horrible reputation as yep. salespeople going, no, like they want vanilla. Great. So let me show you, but let me show you how to get your business to cook. Did you in your vanilla way? Yeah. And then they go, well, gee, Ross, that sounds amazing. <laughs> mind blow right so i'm a sales guy i'm a recruiter and i go okay so this was a, the thing i was showing with talking with mike i'm like so mike so here's the deal you go where are you at now where do you want to be how are you going to get there and they're uh -huh. like i really like vanilla ice cream russ and i want like a lot more vanilla ice cream so by the way here's vanilla ice cream do you want this and they say what every time yeah <laughs> yeah yeah oh, and by the way did you know you could do this this and this and kind of bump that vanilla up a little bit if you mm -hmm. want to and they go, oh, oh, I, don't know. I never thought of it like that. Mm -hmm. When we shift our sales process to that, which is what you're doing, you're telling me you're doing, like you get the vanilla ice cream eaters. If I put up a sign that says, okay, vanilla ice cream people line up here, guess yeah. who's in that line every time? Yep. But we've, we've got a sign that we throw up and we're like, ice cream or hot dogs or what? But no, dude, like build your brand, build your flavor and, and put your sign up and let those people come to you. And that's yeah. kind of the shift that you're doing when you're doing recruiting. So, yeah. Um, so what kind of recruiting were you doing before your, your business was recruiting? Yeah. So it was, uh, so it was, um, so it was a Legis group. I don't know if you've heard of them. I mean, they're a $15 billion company. They do a lot of different things. My niche was engineering services. Wow. That's uh, so they did 12, um, it was Aerotech was the brand that I worked for. Then you had Aerotech, yeah. Tech Systems, a lot of different sister companies and, Aerotech had like 12 different divisions under that umbrella. And so I kind of yeah. had my hand into a lot of them, um, but where, um, and then I actually grew into a, like an outsource services role. Right. So I would go to yesterday, we just did a, I took, I did a GM, um, the Fort Wayne assembly plant is, I saw uh, that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we do, they do the Silverado here, the Silverado yeah. and GMC Sierra. And yeah. so I used to sell to them. And, um, and so, um, did a tour of that. Well, I would go to GM, let's say on a manufacturing side, they wanted to add in a robotic cell. Yeah. I would then sell to their procurement and their engineering teams and everything else. And then I would have a recruiting team, a program manager. I would then assemble the team, you know, and we didn't have a lot of people on staff. So we'd have to go out and recruit the team to go take yeah. on that work sure. and, and then go. And, and then part of the piece too, was like, like almost like you're a headhunter. Yeah. Um, you know, so companies would just, uh, like for like direct placement type roles. How did you, so, so how did you find those people? Um, a lot of it, how I would teach my recruiters and I started as a recruiter, mm -hmm. um, actually a really interesting story you might like. I was a, uh, actually I have a physics degree, uh, physics and math degree. And, I love and that, physics and hate math. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the conceptual Theoretical. side is awesome. Yeah. Theoretical, I totally get it, man. Love that. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I have, um, so I went to Aerotech actually looking for a job because I wanted to be in sales and then use the technical yeah. degree. Yeah. And uh, they're like, Hey, we really don't hire that role, but we like to hire entry-level salespeople and bring them in as a recruiter. 
we have an opening in our engineering division. Are you interested? And so I fell in love with the company and the culture and kind of saw it as a vehicle to get me to where I wanted to go. So you're a and, rocket scientist and they're saying, well, we really don't want somebody that smart, but we'll give you this job. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, and so, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm in, <laughs> yeah, let's go. And, and I was there for 10 years, right? Wow. And um, it was uh, it was cool. So I worked my way up through the company and yeah. um, did, uh, you know, I was managing probably about 120 people is nice. in, directly and indirectly. Yeah. Um, and then I was, and I got to a crossroads, you know, of, you know, I, I didn't want to move. And if I wanted to move up in the company, I had to move. Um, I have a growing young family and Fort Wayne is extremely family oriented. And yes. so, and Austin and I, we've always talked about doing something yeah. together. Uh, we grew up next door to each other as cousins. And, um, and, uh, and I always said, if there's anyone in my family, I'd want to do business with, it'd be Austin. And then after a while, you know, because I'm around a lot of executives, a lot of like high end business people selling yeah. the Fortune 100 companies. And I'm like, if there's anyone I would be into business with, period, it would be Austin, just with how he thinks and how he's structured and we're polar. And all these other people. That's that's a that's a bold statement. Yeah. And he's I mean, he is uh, he and I are like identical, but completely opposite. And and so it works. It like really works. Uh, yeah. And so um, so it made more sense for me to get into real estate. My uncle's been yeah. in real estate for over 30 years. My dad's done the remodel restoration contractor yeah. thing yeah. his whole life and yeah. so I was like all right well I'll just go there um but uh but yeah so since then I mean we have a team of 30 now um like our actual team we yeah. have a lot of different businesses so we have a team of 30 yeah. our rev shares uh just under 100 um we have uh, a coaching and training company Good. we have um, a transaction management company okay. um and then so that. doing like like transaction coordinators and things sure, like that, sure. and so they do a great job end to end. So that's good. Yeah, makes yep. it easy and to so, work on the right stuff. Good. Exactly. So we've been we've been really building wide, you know, like with all these yeah. companies and getting the foundation set for the last couple of years, and now we're ready to like really recruit and go. Yeah. And and so I'm trying to make um, my the biggest piece that I'm I'm working on right now is how to really simplify the attraction process for the general the, the 80 the 88 yeah. percent yeah you know and um and so it's been yeah it, it's been like uh you know it, it's just really getting them to run a run a process right to a degree yeah and and then how do i like overly simplify that for them well, and yeah. and so that's that's what i've been working on right now all right so i know somebody can help shortcut some of that okay okay so what you're basically saying to me is russ uh, I need to build a recipe that works and yep. works really well, works consistently and something people are willing to do. Yep. Okay. So don't put cold calling on that list. Yep. <laughs> okay. Most people are like, oh yeah, no, they won't. Okay. Yep. You're not going to do it at a high level. Okay. Yep. So, uh, so, so let me go backwards and shift your brain here for a second, if you don't mind. Yeah. So I'm going to go into coach Russ mode. So we're, we're two dudes having a conversation. Go coach I like it. Russ mode. I like it. So here's the deal. Um, let me get your mindset right on this first. So then you go, I, it makes sense. Okay. So you were doing recruiting for corporate and you have a, you have a specific role that you yep. need somebody for. So how do you market for that? How do you market for that? Yeah. So um, helicopter you pilots, out, no helicopter pilots. You put out right? an ad that says, I need somebody. Yeah. Networking. No, but you're, you're going to, so you put out just an ad and you go, we need to hire somebody. Yeah. We don't want to do that. No. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Right. So uh, number one, what do you need? Right. Mm -hmm. so you get really clear. So right now it's like, what do you need? So clarity on, on need. What do you need? Okay. So here's the one thing we're talking about consistently when we're talking about this recruiting process of real estate agents. Um, I'm trying to get this guy. So my job is to take them from a, where are you now to where do you want to be? And then how are you going to get there? If I can show you the path to get there, do you want that? And they go, yeah. So like we were talking about earlier, vanilla ice cream. If I say, hey, guys, I got vanilla ice cream. Who wants some? They get people standing in line. You're like, okay, you want some vanilla ice cream? Great. Well, I've got some for you. And by the way, we can do this, this, and this with it. Do you want that? And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Okay, great. So let's go. So the, the problem is uh, thinking about like your position. You're hiring engineers for a specific thing. So, uh, well, I need an engineer. Still not specific enough, right? So I'm looking for motivated, driven, and nice. 
Mm -hmm. Those are my three top, top three criteria. And then within that, then there's some sub things that go along with it. And the way I'm going to attract them is by telling that story and then promoting that story and being specific on what I'm looking for. So when I talk to people about recruiting real estate agents, what we find is that um, they don't, they don't have clarity on what they need. And they also don't have clarity on what they have to offer, right? And then the next problem we have is uh, they're not clear on what they need. They're not clear on what they have to offer. And then they throw out these wishy-washy messages of nonsense. And they get like, my people are all over the place, Russ. They're driving me crazy. And all I got is a bunch of baby birds in the nest screaming for worms all the time. And they refuse to grow feathers. I don't want those people, right? So, so what do we want? So you got to get really clear on what you want. Okay, so I want motivated, driven, and nice. Okay, and the motivated is somebody that's saying, uh, here's what I'm thinking and saying. That's that's the motivation part, right? And then the drive, motivated and driven, that drive is what have they done? So somebody is saying, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. The next question for them is like, tell me some, tell me about some of the things that you've done in the past. Tell me about something you did great. Listen, somebody that's driven is gonna come up with a list of things they've done great, right? They're like, tell me about something you did that was big, different, interesting, amazing, unique. Tell me about an accomplishment. You know, you get a driven person and be like, well, you know, I ran 14 marathons last year and I started doing triathlons and I bike somewhere in 5,000 miles a year. And, you know, um, I build, uh, you know, two, three, four bass guitars a year just for fun. I forge knives for fun. Th those are the things that pop out of a driven person's face. You know, you're just right, going, right. what, like, when do you sleep, right? Okay, so when you ask somebody, tell me about some of the things you've done. Tell me about something you did that was great. And they're like, well, you know, my mom said I was pretty. What? Like, this is somebody that's like talking a great game, but they haven't done anything. Let's yeah. be clear. If they're 45 and they can't come up with something they've done. Like you tell me, you're like, well, you know, I got a degree in physics and mathematics. And they're going, done. <laughs> like, right. Just, right. Say no more, brother. Right? Yeah. You don't get a degree in physics without, you know, doing stuff. Okay? Yeah. So get really clear on what we need. So what do we need? I need motivated, driven, nice. And then is there a need to fulfill? So you're not going to put out an ad. I need an engineer. I need a robotics engineer with this, which that is skilled in this, this, and this. They've got to be yeah. motivated, driven, nice, and yeah. they've got to have the skill set. And part of that yeah. skill set could be uh, a personality trait that you're looking for versus an actual uh, honed skill set. So like able to list and sell, you know, like, no, we're this is this is the person we're hunting for. We're hunting for somebody that wants vanilla ice cream that doesn't have any. Yeah. Right. So people are like, well, Russ, but I want to, I want to get a I want to get real estate agents that are successful in my revenue share group and they're gonna blah blah blah. And I'm like, um, let me go backwards. There's a guy named Mike Hellickson. You ever bumped into Mike Hellickson? He runs Club Wealth, coaching company slash real estate guy. Uh he and I go back a ways. He's in what's his name again? Michael Hellickson, Club Wealth, great guy. Super great guy. One of my favorite people in the world, business people, great dude. Okay. And one of the things, Mike is an infopreneur. It's basically, he monetizes information. Welcome to being a coach, right? And, and uh, Michael calls me, he goes, hey, my kid Austin's starting to build a team uh, and he wants to build a team and you're the guy, right? I'm the recruiting people. And I said, okay, well, Mike, what do you want? What are you looking for? And he's like, well, we're looking for eagles. I was like, so so what's the problem? He goes, we can't get like, it's just, it's like, number one, like, where do you find them? Number two, how do you get them when you do find them? Yeah. This is a guy that sold over a thousand houses a year, right? Right. So he's not slow, but this recruiting component just baffles everybody. I yeah. said, well, uh, number one, you got to get clear on what you want. Number two, you're aiming for the wrong thing. And number three, your failure is, is imminent because uh, you don't have one and two. <laughs> he's like, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, that's not, that's, that's, that's not hundred percent accurate, Russ. I'm like, all right, how's your results? He's like, shut up. <laughs> kind of how it went. Right. So I said, yeah. okay, go on. You're not looking for Eagles. Eagles don't need you. Yep. He's like, what? Like Eagles don't need you. They're standing on the branch. They're hungry. They jump up, they fly over to the pond. They grab a trout, pick it up, go back over the tree, eat the trout, spit the bones out, beat the crap out of every bird, every other bird in the tree. And then they're like, oh man, now I'm hungry again. They go back and grab another trout. Like they don't, what part of that do they need you for? They can eat, they can fight. 
their control their tree. What else do they want, right? So what yep. you want is ducks. And he's like, no, nah, man, I don't want ducks. And like, yeah, well, there's two kinds of ducks. There's live ducks and there's dead ducks. Okay, dead duck is I've been in the business for 12 months and I have zero sales. Or um, we don't know if they're live or dead. Sometimes we'll take a risk on somebody we don't know live or dead. But let's be clear. If they've been in the business for one year and nobody's done business with them, even their friends and family won't do business with them, we've got a problem. <laughs> Houston, we have a problem. Okay. If they're alive at all, any motivation and any drive at all, they're going to get something's going to hit them. That's a live yeah. duck. Okay. So I'm going to say, okay, you got one or two or three, but you want to be at 20. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for ducks that want to be eagles. So when I ask them, where are you at now? A, position A, where are you? And then I say, okay, great. So what have you done to get there? What do you like? What do you not like? And then the second question is, okay, where do you want to be? What does that look like? A, a, Duck that wants to be eagle is going to say, well, I'm at three, four, five. I want to be at 20, 25. And then I say, why? Why do you want to be there? We get into that why part. Why do you want to be there? You can put your kids through school. It quadruples your income, gets you over $100,000 a year, gives you the ability to save for college, yeah. like, gets you ability to pay down your bills, all of those things that will make your life a ton better. So I also know that if I get a couple of these and help them get here, I've got really great testimonials, right? Mm -hmm. You take somebody from 20 to 25 sales, 25 to 40 sales. I mean, don't get me wrong. That's great. But that doesn't change their life. You take yeah. somebody from two or three sales to 20, that's life-changing for their family. That's game-changing stuff, right? Yeah. So if I can start telling that story <clears throat> and getting clear on what I want, then I'm looking for a different animal. So once I get really clear on what I need and what I want, and then what do I have to offer them? Okay, so here's where we also go wrong in this business. Okay, um, we, go to, we go straight into selling tools mode. Well, we got this and this and this and this. Look at the EXP explained. I'm going to pick on this and somebody's going to be like, geez, Rush, a little bit harsh on that. I'll just tell you, it works for some people and it worked for a lot of people in the beginning. But it wasn't yeah. because the EXP explained was so great. It was simply because people were searching for anything other than what they had. And this is like, hey, close enough. You got my attention, right? Got their attention, but it didn't speak to who they were. Now you got to go like, who are you? What do you need? I'm going to sell you and, and where do you want to go? I'm going to sell you only that and go to the next level. So here's the problem. This guy right here is disenfranchised because this business isn't what they thought it was. Number two, they really don't know how to control what they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, weekly basis, monthly basis. They need a daily, weekly, monthly plan. Thirdly, they need somebody that can support them and answer questions and be available for them because they know now, hopefully, probably, that they really have no freaking clue what they're doing. They better have somebody to back them up. And number four, they feel like, like I feel like an island. I'm on my own. I don't know what I should be doing. I feel like I want to be part of something. So here's a fact that I know to be true. Almost every single person I know that's a good runner runs with a running group on a regular basis. Almost everybody I know that is a great biker bikes with a biking group on a day, on a, on a weekly basis, if not daily basis. Mm -hmm. Always make the people around you stronger if you're running in the right pack and you're and you're biking in the right pack. So they, you got to be clear on what your pack is and who they are and what problems you're solving and talk to that because nobody gives a crap about revenue share. What they do care about is like, at some point, eight, nine, 10, 15, 20 years down the road from now, if there was a way to have some passive income streams coming in that helped you set yourself up to be able to not have to trade time for money forever, would you be interested in talking about that? Yes. If we do this for the next 15, 20 years, would you like to have the ability to have some things done automatically that force you to save money so that you've got a more likely chance of being able to actually have cash in your pocket enough to say, I don't have to do this anymore? Mm -hmm. Is that an option too? Great. So that's the end result. That's the sprinkles and the chocolate sauce and the whipped cream and the cherry, right? But we got to sell them the base. We're talking vanilla ice cream. Do you want to set up a system where business comes to you instead of you chasing it all the time? Yes. They all like that, right? Would you like something that's really, really simple and repeatable? So you know you did your job every day and you know how to measure that. Yes. Do you want a couple of other people that are in the same boat so you can row the same boat together since you're all going the same direction, would you like to have a couple other people in there? It's way more fun to sing the row, row, row your boat song and around when you have three or four or five people. Singing by yourself is weird. Okay, so you want to have some people along on this journey with you so you all make each other better. Okay, I don't want to go to war by myself. I want to go to war with all my best buddies. I want to, my zombie mm -hmm. apocalypse crew, I'm building that out, right? You might, you might be on it. We, we don't have a physicist on it. Okay, so 
we got a guns guy, we got a nut bag, I can make anything. So, yes. like, okay, so we got to get really clear on what we need and want our person to look like, could be very clear on what we have to offer, and then we've got to speak their language. If you are dying for a bowl of vanilla ice cream, reach out to us. We can show you how to get it. We can show you how to get a consistent supply of it. How would you like to have vanilla ice cream regularly delivered to your house? <laughs> Woo! Got me, right? That's the kind of messaging we need to have. So instead of going, look at this vanilla ice cream, it's amazing. It's got little chunks of beans in it. It's got this, and look at this packaging is amazing. And this packaging just draws you in. Look at this beautiful picture of this beautiful cow. Nobody cares, right? Like, let me inside that thing. I want to shove that stuff in my pile. Listen, I didn't get this shape by not eating ice cream. Come on, I'm a professional. Okay, so do you get how when we're doing this attraction process, we got to get really clear on what we want, really clear on what we have. And then we got to say, what is the result that you want? And we got to speak to that, yeah. right? Yeah. So when I'm talking to an engineer, I say, okay, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Engineer, you could work for anybody. Would you like to work for a company that gives you the freedom to, to express yourself, number one, the freedom to do what you do best, um, the support and appreciation for what you're doing? Do you want to feel like the company actually gives a crap about your success, not just a moneymaker for them? Would you like to have a little bit of latitude? Would you like to have leadership that will actually take your input and listen to your input versus mm -hmm. just trashing you and telling you how to do it when they haven't done it in 50 years or telling you how to do something they don't even know how to do anymore mm -hmm. since 1970? Um, is that the type of environment you want to work in? Yes. And by the way, we also have a 401k. And by the way, we also have health insurance. And by the way, we're also going to give you a stipend for a vehicle because we're a vehicle company. We want you driving our vehicles. We'll give you a stipend for that too. How does that sound? Mm -hmm. They want to feel loved and respected and appreciated and generate money. And yeah. you, see, you see where we're missing it in the real estate business. We're like, we got rev share, we've got stocks, we've got, and they're yeah. like, yeah, no, that's exactly it. Feel like you're part of something. So you got to, so then you got to craft that message. So then you're shifting that message to speaking to them, right? And I'm going to shift that message to get this guy to show up. So I can say, where are you at now? Where do you want to be? How are you going to get there? Now, let me show you, based on what you just told me, how we we solve that and help you move forward. So we've got this recipe that does this. Boom, boom, boom. We've got a recipe that shows you how to get house sales to come to you. We've got a recipe that helps you become an expert to all the people around you. So then they think of you as an expert, which means they're going to call you when they need expert advice. Then you get to become their consultant. And guess what? Consultants get paid a lot of money. So we get you to be their expert. So they let you be their consultant and apply that expert mm -hmm. to them. And with that being said, you're going to make a bunch of money. Okay, we're talking $12,000 checks. Let's show you how to get 20 of those a year. Then once you're doing that reasonably well, there's going to be some other people floating around in this world. And some of them are going to say, hey, it looks like you're having more fun than I am. Looks like you're making money. How do you do that? And you're like, hey, you want to come along with me? Let me show you how to do it. If I bring you along, company's making some money off you. I should make some money because I brought you along, right? So why not? So it's kind of like a royalty. I write a cool song, somebody else plays it and, and they're getting paid money from that. Shouldn't you give me a piece of it? I wrote the song, right? That's mm -hmm. how songs, songwriters get paid royalties, right? Yeah. Did you know there is a guy that wrote the theme song for Simpsons? His name's Danny Elfman, big composer in LA. He wrote about like Desperate Housewives theme song and uh, did the, uh, so he was hired to do the soundtracks for Terminator movies, where in fact, a guy named Edgardo Simone actually uh, wrote the, the, the soundtracks. Edgardo Simone, the reason I know this story is because Edgardo Simone used to call me driving up and down the, the Pacific Coast Highway, smacking out on like water burgers or whatever he's driving. And he just called me randomly to talk to me about nonsense. And he played one of my bass guitars in the soundtracks for Terminator movies. Yeah. Kind of funny, right? So jacked up long story, but he tells That's me cool. Danny Elfman wrote the theme song for Simpsons. And every time the Simpsons plays anywhere, he gets paid $10,000. Huh. How many days a week is the Simpsons on? Wow. At least seven? Yeah. $10,000 every day just for the Simpsons theme song. So he's like, when you wonder how these people do what they do and live in these houses and make the money that they make, they do things that get them royalties because they get paid time after time after he made it one time, took him a month, goofing around, records on a bubble. He gets paid $10,000 a day every single time that thing plays, which yep. is every day of the week for the last 25 years. I don't even know the math on that. It's huge. Yeah. So when we're thinking, how do we set this up where business comes to us? And that's, that's a component we can add to that. So you can make some money passively as we go along, okay?
And, and like, does that interest you at some point? Great. Well, let's talk about that later once we get you doing this. Now we're attracting the right people. We're getting the right people that want to be in our bucket and they're going to stay in the bucket hmm. versus coming in and going, well, I was just going to do rapture. Well, that's great, but that's one component, but you're going to die of starvation if you don't do this first. So let's talk about selling houses first, generate some cash. When you do that, let's talk about the, the story you tell that goes along with that. That'll make other people say, hey, I want to do that. Hmm. Now there's a system, there's a recipe. Yeah. So your next step and your next question would be, and, and you said you're going to do is develop, you need to develop what is that recipe you're going to use that your people can use consistently to get yep. consistent results, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> so I can show you a recipe for that too, if you're interested. Yeah, 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 for sure. I, um, you see what I just uh, did there? I, I do, I do. Um, I mean, there, it's like something on out there and I'm swinging away. <laughs> so, but I do have uh, We're sales um, guys, and we all fall for it, dude. I'm the easiest person to sell. I'm like, yeah, sounds yeah. Good. They say, that. uh, um, uh, the sales, uh, the best salesmen are easiest sold. Yeah, that's what I would always tell my sales guys. You uh, must be amazing. Say, no. That was easy. <laughs> easy. easy. <laughs> yeah, I do have a hard stop. My uh, yeah. so my wife, uh, my wife is pregnant. Um, congratulations thank you thank you so uh we were working for a fourth and we found out that we're having twins <laughs> so so we're gonna have five so let's, go, uh, let's go back let's go back to my recipe uh, <laughs> motivated <laughs> yeah. we know you've been doing something driven yeah, that's right <laughs> All right. We know you're good at sales. Somebody yeah. cooperated. Yeah. And I'm nice because my wife hasn't divorced me yet, you know? <laughs> uh, my wife and I have been married 28 years at the end of next week, and uh, we have zero children. So okay, uh, so you're you're the balance to my wife and I. So there we go. <laughs> All right. So there we go. So here's the thing. We we need to kill this conversation. You got somewhere else to be. So two two more things, right? Yeah. Uh, I shot a video with a guy named Griff Zollinger. I don't know if you've ever seen him before or not. He's out of San Antonio area. He runs under the, uh, he was running under Pat Hayes around that group, uh, Scott Lewis and Pat Hayes group yeah. uh, organization. Uh, I shot a video of me talking to him on how to do this while selling houses and ultimately make that a lot easier so that comes to him. Yeah. So if you would like, I can send it to you. I recorded it. And I said, do you mind if I show this to some people because there's a lot of people that need to hear this yeah. because they're prepared to be in like, bang the phones, bang the phones, bang the phones, yep. chase so in the process of doing this, you can do this. I will tell you if you just do that recipe, and there's a couple other things I can add to that, but if you just do that recipe uh, and teach your people that recipe, this will start becoming organic. And, and, yes. and, and that's exactly, that's literally what I've been uh, working on. I mean, it was on my, it's on my to-do list for today and is to do that. I'd love to see that video. Okay, it's about 50, 50 or 55 minutes within that video. I will know if you watched it because at some point at the end of that, you'll be like, hey, Russ. Uh, you wouldn't mind sending me the things you told Griff you'd send them. Uh, <laughs> that's how I know you'll watch it. And yeah. Those parts and pieces make this a lot easier. And you could just take that recipe and tweak it. It's a recipe I've been using for a long time that works extremely well. And it's yep. talking to people about doing the right stuff. And I will literally look at people and say, listen, if you won't do this, get out of the business. Because it's like basic yeah. 101 to make this a ton easier for you. It's yeah. working your sphere of influence. It's not chasing business. It's adding value, yep. becoming an expert. People want you to sell their houses. You start making a bunch of money. And other people go, how are you doing that? Yeah. Okay, done. It's, yep. it's really that easy. That's why I got yeah. stick. No, that's hundred percent. And cool. uh, yeah, what baffles everyone actually because we have a team of thirty and we kick people off our team more than not, and yeah. uh, we don't give them anything. Like we don't give them leads. We don't give them yeah. nothing. Yes, you, you do give them something, right? Yes, you, we give them value. Them. Yes, we give them. We give them value, and we teach right. them actually how to stand up on their own two feet. You know, dude, I'm, I didn't. I didn't just give you a banana and a pea pile of ice cream. And uh, I didn't give you that. I just gave you, I just gave you the thought of a recipe and you're like, oh, I can do that. Right. Is there value yeah. in that? Yeah. They sell cookbooks yeah. put a bunch of those together. Like here's a whole book of them. You want to buy it? And they're like, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Same type of thing. So for anybody else watching this after the fact, yeah. uh, if you want to see the video that I'm sending to him, hit me on private message and say, Hey, Russ, please send me the Griff gold video. And it's me walking him through how to, how to simplify his business, work less hours, make more money and make this unintentionally start happening organically versus chasing it. And that's, what's in that video. So I'll send that to you. And then you got to say, I watched it. And by the way, you owe me five things. <laughs> you figure out what those five things are. I, I owe you yeah. five things. And then you could just take those run like hell with them and then just adjust them a little bit. Best yeah. recipe in the world. You can take it, tweak it a little bit, make it your own. Yeah. Right. 
There's yep. a reason why people make chicken and there's why people make jerk chicken. That's right. You know why? Some people are just a jerk. I mean, <laughs> I mean some, people, some people like that flavor. All right. So find your flavor within that recipe, adjust it. And then when you get something that works really well, you got to call me back and be like, dude, I'm doing this too. Add that to your recipe. I'll, hell yeah, man. Let's add another page. Yeah. Really cool. It's improving. All right, brother. Really cool. Really cool. Awesome.